Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I am Aditya and this is my project partner Gila Ime. We are from group K. Our final project topic is real-time object detection on Google Maps by Yolo V5. So let's take a look at the outline of what we are going to present in this uh, presentation. So first we start with the introduction, what our topic is about. Basically, object, set, uh, object detection. Then we will explore the data, which is our base data set, that is DOTA. And then we will take a look at models, different models that we have used. And also look at experimental setup, what has been um, done with respect to hyperparameters and uh, respective results. Then we will summarize and take a look at what are the limitations of our project and what we would like to do in the future. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure you have seen this picture before in the lecture. I think uh, Professor Mahudi introduced the uh, first class as this one. So, here you can see uh, basically our topic is object detection, but before looking at object detection, uh, we can also see classification. So, here basically a whole image is identified and uh, it is assigned a particular label, so it's just one label. So whole image is being classified as that. And the second one, it is building on top of classification. It is uh, not only classifying the whole image as a cat, it is also localizing the object. So exactly where in this image the cat is located. And our topic of interest is object detection. So in this one, this is different from the first two examples as in object detection there can be multiple objects and all of them together can be identified. So you will have in the output the bounding box and you will also have the label. Here you don't see the label but in our project we had it. So uh, in the example you can see two cats, one dog and duck. And instant segmentation is similar to bounding boxes but the the difference is uh, the objects are more precise as to uh, with respect to the boundary. So you can clearly segment the image into different uh, parts, basically. Yeah. Uh, then we take a look at the applications. So first one, first example of object detection is autonomous driving. So here you can take a look at the GIF. And in this one, we can see the first person view of a car, um, as you can see while driving. So in real time, it is detecting cars and also traffic lights, if you can see. Uh, and there are also probabilities, uh, so how confident the model was with respect to the object being a car or a traffic light, for example. And nowadays, we know that Tesla is uh, making really good progress in this department. Then we have the second example as a surveillance system. Uh, it is used in terms of security. So here also in real time multiple human beings are detected properly. And in case of a security incident, we can quickly identify who the culprit was. Uh, on the left side also you can see the frames per second in real time. What is, uh, yeah, what is the frames? Uh, of the video that is being analyzed. Uh, then we talk about the data set. So our data set is basically DOTA. So uh, there are three main sources of DOTA's data set. First one is Google Earth. So majority of data is coming from Google Earth. Almost 85% is from Google Earth. Uh, and the property about this data set is that this Google uh, data, whatever is coming, is coming in the RGB format. And there are two other data sources, that is uh, JL1 and GF2 satellite. These satellites are providing only uh, base scale images. And the format of all these images are uh, PNG. And if you take a look here, um, yeah, so it's this whole image and this whole image is zoomed in and different examples can be seen for, for example here bridge, it is in green, so it's highlighted in green, so similarly roundabout, highlighted in orange. 
and green for soccer ball field and uh, so on. Mm, yeah. Then uh, we can talk about the different versions of Dota data set. So there are in all three data set, uh, three versions of this data set, 1.0, 1.5 and 2.0. We have selected 1.0 because it is large enough and there is also a leaderboard to compare in case we wanted to. Uh, in the image you can see there are multiple categories, 9 categories on top and 9 categories on the bottom. And yeah, so version 1.0 had 15 categories, <coughs> the categories that are highlighted with the stars were introduced later after 1.0. Um, in 1.5 the container frame category was added and the bounding box, um, the count of bound, bounding box increased to just double of what was uh, it in 1.0. In 2.0, there were 8,000 plus more images uh, added and the category helipad and also airport was added. <coughs> yeah, so here is a histogram of categories. So we are basically showing how the categories are distributed in the data set. So the top three, you can see ship, small vehicles and large vehicles, these are basically dominant in the data set. However, the soccer ball field, roundabout and ground, ticket, uh, ground track field are not that prevalent in the data set. Then we have uh, aspect ratio histogram. So, as you can see, the mean distribution of the aspect ratio is around 0 to 4. And aspect ratio is something uh, which is the width of the image divided by height of the image and uh, you can see most of the images are around 1, 1 point something and which is equivalent to a square but you can also see there are some outliers which have really high aspect ratio. Then moving on there are some visualizations of uh, the images that have low aspect ratios because uh, if we wanted to plot here the, the high aspect ratio, it would not look so good in the presentation. So we just stick to the images with low aspect ratio. Then uh, our, uh, our project is based on YOLO and we are applying it on Google Maps. So basically uh, before discussing YOLO, we can also revisit what we discussed in the lecture for object detection where uh, we discussed few ideas like sliding window and region of proposals and RCNN and stuff. Uh, but the problem with those methods were firstly the sliding window was too computationally expensive and the RCNN methods all, although they were faster but uh, they still were two stage detectors and this is the point that I will uh, improve, uh, I mean uh, the YOLO improves upon and how we will discuss it later. So here you can see um, this whole image is uh, divided into S by S grid and here for example let's just say it's 7. Then what YOLO does is it divides the whole input image into grid of this size and there are, then there are two steps. It uh, computes the bounding boxes and it also computes the class probability map. So in each grid cell there are two bounding boxes and these bounding box has this coordinates like x coordinate, y and how much is the width of the bounding box, height and confidence. This confidence shows uh, how confident the model is, whether the object is really present in this bounding box or not. And then we have this class probability map also. So for Pascal data set, there were say, uh, 20 categories and each grid cell is predicting the probability of this grid belonging to a certain class. Then the output of this image, here we can see it's detecting dog, bicycle and car, but to just in, uh, talk about the output shape, it will be 7 by 7 by 30 and this 30 is coming from 2 into 5, 10 plus the 20. So in the output shape you can see the first to fifth 
uh, layers basically are for the bounding box 1, then bounding box 2, and then we have the probabilities of all these uh, classes. Yeah, so as I said before, RCNN were still two stage detectors, but YOLO it improves upon this by taking only one stage for detection. How we will discuss. So just uh, to to introduce the the model of object detectors, we can see the the structure is like this. The input is there, then you have some backbone and neck, and this this is the part, the head, which is responsible for the prediction. So, so classification and localization. And input can be images, patches, even videos. Then we have backbone. And in this YOLO V4 paper, it was recommended like you can use these uh, models for the backbone of YOLO. Then you, ha you can have some elements like uh, panet that is responsible for the neck and head is for this these are the two differences so dense prediction is for yolo v4 and the sparse prediction are for some other methods like like was like we already talked about faster rcn so in basically what yolo does is um, it calculates the whole um, bounding box and classification in one step which is done here in the dense prediction but in sparse prediction, like the other models, they are collecting the data. I mean, this is done in two steps, and then aggregation is done to perform this uh, classification and localization. Mm. Yeah, so basically, uh, one state detector is something where uh, region of interest are not selected, and the classes and the bounding box are predicted in one go. Then here is an uh, uh, image from the YOLO V4 paper and here you can see uh, additional SPP block, spatial parameter pooling, um, that is responsible to increase the receptive field. And uh, this receptive field refers to the area of image that is exposed to one color. So it basically allows the model to improve the recognition by recognizing the context. Then, yeah, um, there is also a, a component called PANET, which is in the neck. So, the, the role of this is to improve the process of instant segmentation that we were discussing before. Uh, it, it does it by keeping the spatial information which helps in proper localization. Yeah, uh, now we will discuss what are the augmentation methods used in the YOLO V4. So, this is something that was introduced new in YOLO V4. This is mosaic. Uh, augmentation method where four images are combined into one. So basically it allows the model to recognize the objects uh, irrespective of the translations or the scaling. So it enhances actually the recognition. Then there are some more uh, augmentation methods as well. For example mix up. So here you can see there are two images combined together but they are blended. And the other one is cut mix. So one image is put on top of the other image, but it's not blended like what we have seen in mix up. The other one are the regular, like cropping the image, rotating it, flipping it, and mosaic we have already seen. The other one that was used in YOLO V4 was blurring the image. So the basic model that we have used is YOLO V5. There are different versions which we will see later. But uh, since YOLO V5 did not have any paper, this is the architecture we found. And this is pretty similar to what we discussed in YOLO V4. And um, uh, we searched on the internet and we found out that YOLO V5 only improves significantly 
in the terms of the anchor box selection so this there is also some anchor box selection when we are trying to detect the objects and there are some predefined uh, anchor boxes uh, to identify the objects basically and this is the concept that has been uh, uh, added into the model and that's why this is a little bit different it enhances this inference speed of the Yolo V5 and uh, yeah since this upgrade is made uh, the Yolo V5 actually does not need any data set to be considered as an input and automatically it learns from the the images and predicts the bounding boxes and the classification labels. Then these are some uh, YOLO V5 models. This is taken from the PyTorch um, website. And here you can see there are different models like uh, N stands for nano. This is small, medium, large, and extra large. The, the bottom uh, models are the ones which are which are version uh, so Yolo V5 also has some versions, different versions and this is the sixth version these models differentiate uh, together in terms of the pixel size so what is the input uh, image that is required so whatever uh, we have it has to be resized into 640 by 640 in order to be processed by Yolo V5 this model and in the sixth version uh, you have to be uh, resizing the image into 1280. So here we can see quickly that the speed of uh, YOLO V5 nano model is the fastest among all of these. However, if we go on the, uh, the metrics of mean average precision, I think uh, extra large you can quickly see that this is the best one among uh, all of them. However, the speed is a bit slow and that is obvious because the model size is also increasing. Then we have the similar similar metrics for the version 6. And this version 6 has improved the inference speed quite a lot. Like uh, it, can, it can process around 1600 frames per second. And yeah, here also the accuracy in terms of minimum average precision is the highest in the extra large model. Then we are comparing YOLO V4 and YOLO V5 in terms of training time and you can see here the time taken by YOLO V5 small version is very low as compared to what we see in the custom model and uh, yeah similarly YOLO V5 smaller version is the least uh, storage taking and the extra large as we discussed it's a much uh, bigger model. Then we have comparison of inference time and uh, the maximum mean average precision and this is taken at 0 0.5. Here you can see these two models are comparable um, in terms of accuracy. However, if we take uh, speed also into account then YOLO V5S in terms of batch size 36, it's the best one. And similarly, yeah, custom YOLO V4 is taking a lot of time. And this is uh, the comparison on MS COCO object detection. So here we can see that YOLO V4 is actually performing better in terms of uh, this data set. Even though YOLO V5 has the high inference speed, but in terms of um, this data set particularly, YOLO V4 is actually better than V5. Now for the next parts, I would like to hand over to my project partner. Thank you, Ravi. <coughs> so for, for our project, we are proposing uh, to build a website to incorporate all the models that we uh, learned with Adi today. So the idea is to have a website, or it could be a desktop app or even a mobile app. The framework would be versatile to be compatible to multiple devices. Uh, then we would have an integration with an interactive map 
um, coming from Google Maps. So this would be uh, a widget that you could select the region that you want to uh, um, classify and like do the detection. Below you would have the the model that would you can select that we have already trained. Um, we have trained four models: the nano versions, the nano model, and the large model, both without and with augmentations. Then the user would click to detect the the region that it's locked in, or it could draw like a specific square uh, in the map to only identify that specific region and the results would be shown below. So this is like the expected results the app would give. So give like a classification of uh, each of the objects, its location and its um, um, labels that is provided. Also for, we wanted to, it to be used as a real-time tool. So it would be used in real-time so we wanted to keep track of inference time uh, all of the time. And that's the reason why we chose to use the nano version of YOLO. And also give like description of uh, where the, the, the model made the inference on. So uh, for that reason we used the nano version of the model to keep inference time low. Uh, but as a bit of a spoiler, we couldn't achieve the whole project, we couldn't uh, finish the website, so we instead uh, tried to um, train the large version of YOLO to, to make sure like, if the large version of the model is capable of learning of the, of the, um, the features from the adult dataset, it would be the theoretically possible that the nano version also would do just with a lower performance on precision and accuracy. So that's the reason we chose the large version. And these are the parameters that we chose for fine tuning of our models. So the models are pre trained on the COCO uh, dataset. It's a multi variety um, format uh, of objects uh, dataset. It has like mostly ground features of uh, um, cars, people, trees, everything, Coco. And our dataset, Dota, is a top view dataset. So we, we were also uncertain of how the how would the feature extraction that uh, is the pre-trained ways would be for our dataset. So we wanted to keep the learning rate a bit higher than uh, normal fine-tuning uh, learning rates. We kept a uh, few epochs because we didn't want to um, uh, uh, overtrain the model. Uh, it would um, overfit the training. We used the standard optimizer for YOLO, so SVG, and the default values for momentum, weight decay, and image resolution. Image resolution is also a liability in our case because, uh, as I did discuss, our dataset has a, a variety of resolutions in our um, in our dataset, and we had to everything had to like be rescaled and reshaped into 640, 640 by 640, and that would make um, some black um, black parts of the image appear as the default uh, solution. So uh, another experience we, we did is to uh, take out the documentations that YOLO provides to see how well does the, does the augmentations that they provide uh, improve the performance of our model. So as you can see on the left, this is the a training image in the, for the data set. This is like um, all correctly uh, labeled from the data set. And here is the same image, as you can see by the label here, but with uh, a lot of augmentation provided. Here we can see mosaic, mix up, and copy and paste together with some scale and a bit of translation. So here in the bottom left of the second image, 
you can see that it's the same image as this one, only scaled down, but with uh, other objects from other images. So you have multiple objects uh, being detected here. Um, a lot of them are ships. It's, <laughs> it's a bit hard to see because of the labels provided, but um, everything is um, well described to the model to run. Um, the other augmentations they provide uh, that we used was the, to change the color settings. So in the HSV scale, we changed the hue, uh, a lot of the saturation, and the, uh, I forgot the VPEG, and the translation, the scale, and flip left and right is just to flip in the um, y-axis in the image. So, uh, our experimental protocol, uh, we didn't have to um, worry about the division of training validation because Dota already provided that to us. It was already split uh, into three parts. The test part is 937 image. The training is the larger part with 1,411 uh, 1, image all labeled. The labels were manually done and they were uh, done with uh, oriented, oriented bounding box in mind. That will come up uh, later in the presentation. And also we have 458 uh, validation images that also have uh, the, that same amount of uh, labels. The main metrics that we use to measure how good our models perform are the MAP50, also MAP50 to 95 range, precision and recall. And our training environment was used on Google Collab. We used the Python version 3.10, PyTorch 2.0, CUDA 11.8, and GPU Tel T4 for training and inference time for our project. So uh, here you can see, uh, this is uh, the logger uh, results for our training. So you can see that most of the models here, uh, they, they all could still be improved. So the epochs that we chose uh, was a bit too low. But uh, as well, we can see on the metrics side that we can already tell apart which model is better performing than the other. And like, uh, pick a, a direction for the future. So uh, our like the model that uh, tried uh, learned the most was the blue one here, uh, the Yolify large version with no limitation. But our best performing one was the red one, uh, the large version with augmentations. And here the staple is the in the same order. We also tried. <laughs> uh, we also tried a small learning rate um, version of the model, the large version, to see how well it would do if we try to keep as much as, the, uh, as of the original pre-chain weights, and it, it wasn't performing very well, so this, we discarded that idea. Uh, here in the bottom we can see the metrics of each of the the five models, it's in the same order. So here, the fourth uh, model, as I said, the red one is the best performing one, and it almost averaged at a, a zero, 80% precision and 70% recall. So it was a, a good enough result that we thought. Here you can see uh, the, the inference that the model would make in these two images, you can see here in the middle there's still a bit of uh, overlap between the both of the objects, but that's not a cause for from the model. It will be better explained in the future. And in the <laughs> next slide. <laughs> <laughs> and also there's a bit of um, Sometimes here in the larger version with augmentations, some of the small vehicles class was not as detected as it was here in the version with no augmentations. So maybe uh, the 
like the the huge amount of argumentation that was provided was too much to learn this uh, uh, the features from each of the classes. Here is the same picture with the nano. And uh, here we can see that both of the models performed poorly to discover the small vehicle classes and also to, to the, like, uh, tell apart each of the large vehicles. But we can see here at the top that um, it was uh, a good improvement in inference time. So if we wanted to keep it real time, the application, uh, the nano version is still has to be considered as an option. And here is a qualitative uh, uh, result from satellite images. So these are images that are not from the data set, not even from the test part. These are taken from um, like um, Google Earth satellite images directly, not from the data set. So I myself took the, this picture and passed it to the model. Unfortunately, we had to lower the confidence uh, threshold to show the body boxes that we predicted. And we can see, because of that, there are some interpolation of uh, multiple um, body boxes on top of the same object. But most of the bolts here in the picture, in this bay area, are being detected properly. And these two are harbors. This one is better detected, and this one is uh, mixed up about a bolt or a harbor. And here we have uh, another example. Uh, if you recall, this is an example from the mock-up of the site uh, that we showed. So here we, we, we could detect like this as a harbor, the cranes, it thought it was <laughs> some boats, but uh, it like could detect, so there is potential to be used uh, for real time, uh, for sure. And all of this, uh, these results that I took um, from real images were done in the large version of the model. So that's why the inference time is a bit higher than normal. So the conclusion that we had with our experiments was that uh, YOLO can provide fast infer inference times. It's highly adaptable to any kind of uh, data set. And its code is also very versatile, it's very well documented. So it has um, many possibilities that you, the user can um, um, customize its settings to its desire. And augmentation options, by default, they already have a lot of uh, augmentation options. But with the augmentation library, you can also expand that with other uh, augmentations if you desire. And uh, the problem is, uh, the, some of the problems we had with, in, during this project was the high complex, complexity of the YOLO repository. So sometimes we wanted to just, uh, make sure which, loss, uh, which metric was used for loss function and we couldn't find in the, in the scripts. We had to look for forums and that kind of stuff. And some settings uh, that we wanted to alter were uh, were not like uh, pr provided by a function. So you couldn't like just oh just pass this as a variable. You had to change the function and reload the library again. But a summary of our presentation is that the data set has image taken from multiple sources that we were was very handy for uh, real use case, uh, real uses for Google Earth. It can be, it can generalize a lot. Ships and small vehicles are the top categories. So other small categories like uh, ground tracking field uh, are present in the data set, but they're not as well represented. So uh, in real life scenarios, they won't be as easily um, identified by the, our model. Uh, images have no fixed resolution, so images um, uh, had to be converted to a smaller uh, scale and some alterations had to be made, so some black, um, black bars had to be put in the images to make it uh, uh, a perfect rectangle. Uh, 
you'll be five introduce new concepts of augmentation like mosaic. You'll be five also improves on you'll be four and it's much faster and very high increase speed. Dota is, is useful for other interest sources. And YOLO V5 pre trained models are good feature extractors. And YOLO's architecture is good for fine tuning and tracer learning, as like we only did for three epochs, but this could be improved uh, much further with a uh, much larger training experiment. And other satellite sources require lowering the competent threshold, so as we saw with the real. Uh, real case uh, test images, we had to lower the confidence score to, mm, to see what the model is trying to predict. So, uh, talking about the limitations uh, of the project, uh, the original data set Dota is uh, oriented body boxes, uh, the, the boxes are labeled like so. That means that each of the body boxes can have an angle so, for example, these, these two cars, they are more linked to the right, and so on here, and they are very justified to each other. But as a limitation, YOLO only, had, uh, only takes a squared notation for body boxes. So, it doesn't take oriented version, so we, have, we had to choose uh, how to do the conversion, and we expanded the body box. So basically, we took out the angle of the body box and, uh, and amplified it to cover the whole object. So that, that causes naturally uh, an overlap between objects. So that's a possible cause of, of, of why uh, our model couldn't uh, tell apart directly each car from each other. And our future works is to continue developing the app. Here's what we have so far. So we are using the Streamlit, the Streamlit uh, library and we've developed this page that has already the map. The issues that we are having is to obtain the current image from the map and pass it, pass it as an image to the model. Um, and by now, we are not, uh, this is uh, HML, um, HML tag, so it's not a library that we can easily uh, like look up functions to. So we are trying to find an integration with Google Maps to obtain uh, an easier uh, connection and integration of both parts. And this is what we have so far. These are the references that we used throughout our presentation, and thank you. Thank you. Mm, great, thanks for the presentation. <coughs> it was mm, 38 minutes, so it was okay. okay. <coughs> we have uh, 20 minutes for questions. So. Any questions from the public? <coughs> <laughs> Uh, in that presentation, did you uh, use any framework to train the model? Like, of course, you use PyTorch, but did you <coughs> handwork like just implement or um, use the GitHub uh, your copy it to? And, uh, yeah, try yeah, we use their default uh, training scripts, and we just uh, pass the configuration file for the, the, the data set and mm -hmm. the hyper parameters. Yeah. And you also have to just normalize the bounding boxes as well. That is also a requirement. Yeah, right. So we have to scale 0 to 1. Okay. <laughs> 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 you said you trained for three epochs. I think you also showed a bar plot showing yeah. the trend time. I, think. I couldn't see it. Um, how much did the training take? Like, because you only used Kona? Um, each, um, okay. each of the trainings took approximately one hour. Okay. Yeah. That's too many Yeah. This one? Yeah. It's not presenting. Oh. I think you just need to run the presentation once again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here. Um, we will provide a link to the to 
the comet uh, logger, it has all the experience and how long it took uh, each of them to run and all of the hyperparameters. I want to ask you on page 25 um, b because of the cars were not. Uh, this one? Maybe before? Oh. Sorry? Yeah, th this one, 24. Then. Um, because you were saying uh, about the cars, I was um, wondering why, in the w without the augmentation, uh, it was worse. Uh, how did you uh, give the data set you have to follow? Uh, like, I've seen from your slide that you have unbalanced data. Mm -hmm. So when you're uh, making the data set for YOLO, did you try to balance it or you kept it as it is? No, we kept it original. Uh, the only alterations that we did was to uh, the format of the bounding box. So we uh -huh. changed it to from oriented to this uh, extended version, but besides that, we kept the uh, data set like intact. Because I, I, it's just um, thinking in a, in a louder voice. Uh, I thought about it, and I thought since you also made a documentation and you have unbalance, then you increase the unbalance, mm -hmm. and that's why I don't know if it's correct or not. It's just I'm trying to discuss it with you. And also based on your page 30, also because of the overlapping, this cost. No, it's just because you were explaining uh, the overlapping between uh, uh, the, the cars. Because yeah, yeah. now you have a horizontal bounding box, it's not the oriented one. And then for cars, uh, it will be also a lot of uh, intersection. And that's why you also make it worse when you're trying to increase the data you have since it's unbalanced? I don't know if Pedro, um, this thinking is makes sense or yeah, not I at all. Yeah, I have a question on this slide. Yeah. Uh, because it's, okay, it, could, it seems strange that yeah, exactly. the augmentation is worse. It's uh, better, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really strange. It's but like, keep in mind this is just one example. Like the, the whole matrix uh, show that overall the with augmentation is better. <laughs> no, yeah, but I mean, for instance, okay, mm -hmm. let, let's see this figure and try to think a reason for that. Yeah, because yeah. the most important is not, okay, we got a, a good metric, but we need to understand the metric. Yeah, yeah. Could you, any of you, even you, group A, or any of the audience, think a reason why, in this case, uh, it was worse with I think this augmentation? Training time was too low, so it was not able to uh, train on all the different kind of exactly. exactly, because why we use data implementation to avoid overfitting, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we want a more most most robust model right? that, that the cure training cure is not uh, far away from the validation, right? Yeah. But uh, for the model in every epoch, we are changing the data, so it will be more difficult for the model to learn. But this model will be more robust. Mm -hmm. So it will take more epochs. If you check in, in the lecture, the models with data augmentation takes more time to convert mm -hmm. than the others without data augmentation. So probably here, uh, it, it's in, in that area. That it's better without augmentation. Then, in more epochs, maybe 20 epochs, it will be much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we have a more robust model. Did you apply data documentation like all of the data documentation which you showed in the slide at once or did, was there an option to just select few of those according to the probability test for every type okay. of documentation? Yeah. Uh, some of these are probabilities. So, for example, um, flip, mosaic, and mix up and copy paste are probabilities. So it happens on this, uh, uh, how regularly it happens, and the others is like the... So all of these uh, augmentations were applied at once? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but it's, um, how can I say, it's also random of like, 
uh, how much are applied at the same time. It can be more than one um, in the same picture. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I have two other questions, but also in this one I wanted to comment here when the augmentation, uh, the same uh, image, it has a wrong classification or uh, detection because the bottom here is 4, but now we see that it's labeled as 3, beside 11, you know? Um, here. Yeah, it's also the same as the one we were discussing on page 24. It's I think, uh, I know, this is, um, how can I explain it? Um, this, both of those images are one, fa one part of the patch. So think of this. Uh, I don't. I, I think I can show you. Do you have the GitHub yeah. open? Because uh, both of these images are from a grid of like I think five by five. So like there are twenty five images uh, shown together, mm -hmm. and that's why like uh, the like the bottom half of the secondary image is it could be getting from the picture on yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, there is a part of the image itself it was labeled as 4 and it's not shown in the image. I, I know what you mean, I, I know, because mm -hmm. it's a whole patch and it's trying to show you if all the images was fed into this patch. Uh, no, I think it's in the, in the comments. But it's fine, go back to the presentation, it's the other thing. Plus 21. Right, um, like you have two harbors, 4, 4, and then four, another 4. four. And then you have 4, 4, and then this is not detected. Which no. part? Like this? Yeah, I, but because you have three... three. I think it, it's like... Um, this image is like up until here. It's cut in Ah, half. this is a different one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, this is, I thought the whole one. It's not like the whole one. It's Okay, okay. okay, now I see. And, um, yeah, like, uh, this is, yeah. No, I thought here in the left it's the whole one. No, okay, no. now I see. Mosaic, you remember the four images are combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these two labels come from the image that's like on top and bottom here. And in page 16, if I may ask, uh, you, you gave us a comparison of the different time and uh, the different models. Yeah. Um, <coughs> like, for instance, this one, have you did it in your day? No, no, no. This is taken, general. Uh, this is taken from a uh, internet. Oh, okay, not, not based on uh, Dota. Okay. No, no. And in it's in general because we wanted to compare how YOLO V4 is, uh, YOLO V5 is improving upon V4. And my last question, uh, on previous page, uh, you have said something about uh, that we we have to have the images in 64, uh, 640 or yeah. 1280, but I think it can be accepted to give different uh, image size. It's, this is based on what YOLO was trained on those uh, image size and this image size, but you can like, feed yeah, in so different image size yeah, for training. Yeah, uh, I it's mean, uh, we just uh, put 640 in the. Yeah, board. you can, but I, I, I mean, you can give any image size for, for training and then it will be accepted. Yeah. yeah. Th this is based on the what was trained. And yeah. This result, yeah. This is more useful if you just want to perform a pay inference, for instance, with a pretended model. Yeah. So you, you need to follow this uh, specification. Yeah. Can we uh, freeze the layers, just leaving the first layer so that it can uh, take uh, adjusted inputs? Yeah. Okay. You mean the back one? Since the model architecture, we can freeze the layers. Ah, okay. And just the input layer, we will have it as uh, uh, it can adapt or we can fix it according to our image size. But for this project, we did not do it. It's freezing. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Okay. I uh, have some questions. Um, first, let's go to page seven. Yeah, the 
from the response. Um, this imbalance also the user. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For instance, come co back one slide, please. There are many ships. So do you think the model is better at recognizing ships than other classes, for instance? Yeah, I think uh, it's more biased yeah, towards it's the biased, yeah. more biased towards the categories that are more prevalent. Maybe we can confirm that. Uh, I'm not sure you consider your final report, but maybe uh, the accuracy is per class, just to mm -hmm. check how it yeah. is. Yeah. Because you, you reported uh, the mean average position, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can check the average position per class yeah, yeah. and see uh, how the model is. You want to see it now? Ah, do you have it? Yeah, we have in the comment, the logger for the training. Yeah, in comment, you just gave the weights and then it will read it. Uh, we provided before training, so when it started training, it will automatically redirect everything there. It's also in this one. I think not. Yeah, but this is like one of the, the trainings. Go, go down, try to find the link. The opus in another file or what is it? It's in a uh, like a thing support. Like ah, support, yeah. I, I just have to find the link. Ah. Uh, like what that it is or something else? It's called Comet. Um, it's yeah, yeah. So do you have a specific one you want to ch uh, check? Yeah, the best model, maybe? The best model. Uh, yeah. uh, this is the metrics.
But the, like, what it does basically, it will try to make the image as squared as possible. But it will shift, uh, trying to fit in the picture. So, for example, I have uh, we have one that's like, like uh, low aspect ratio. Ah, yeah. You can show that image also, which was used in that. No, it doesn't happen there. So we basically have like one uh, low aspect ratio picture like this, and to try to fit it to a like squared version of itself, it will break it into parts. Ah, okay. And like do a composition like this, and like have like a staircase of picture, and the rest would be all black. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, because uh, otherwise it will change the scale, which is more the most important part. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go to page 12, please. Uh, it was not clear for me. You were talking about yellow before, and then you show another fear. This one? Yes, that is also yellow before. Yes. Yeah. So this figure should be the same as the previous one. This is structure. Yeah, I think this this one was from the paper itself, but this one is taken from an article in on the internet. Ah, okay. So yeah, yeah, I was just trying to explain. Uh, yeah, the red one would be the last one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The and basically, SPP would be the neck. Okay. Yeah, and this one would be the head. was done when the Euro V5 was really recent and there were doubts regarding the credibility of Euro V5 but as soon uh, later on as more people started using it it became more credible and then this figure would have been changed. Mm. Okay. Since, since here it is performing Euro V4 is outperforming V5. Okay. Um. Maybe one hundred doesn't make sense. Maybe ten or fifteen is enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Maybe it's per class in the same. So. Ah, can you go to the test images with satellite imagery that are not in the data set? Do you think? Can you think a reason why you have to load a threshold, a confidence threshold, for these cases? Um. I think because of like the the context, like the those days I said, uh, uh, not all of the images are like uh, with base multiple uh, multiple objects. Most of them are like um, specified in region. So if if it's an image uh, in the data set talking about uh, boats and and harbors, it's only that. It doesn't have cars or uh, trees. <laughs> Most of the data set uh, is like uh, in the same group, you can say. Maybe that's why they use mix up uh, annotation, right? Yeah. So like to, to mix all these contexts. Yeah. But anyway, I think it doesn't make sense to look for cars and for water, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes sense. I was also thinking, not sure if you pay attention or not, the 
the scale mm -hmm. and use crop or take this image from Google Maps. Oh no. Well, because in Google Maps it's great because you have uh, cloud free images, mm -hmm. but uh, as you zoom in, you have uh, higher resolution images, but you don't know the resolution. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that's good, but also it's not so good because we don't know the scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can measure this. There are some uh, tools to measure. Okay, the object, maybe my car was 10 pixels, now I have to search for 10 pixels. Mm -hmm. But not sure if you, you take this into account or just took a random image. No, we just <laughs> took a random image. Maybe that's one reason the scale yeah. that may that may affect that as well. And just one final question: Any general recommendations in, in general, data set or models for someone that wants to do the same as you? Hmm. Do it. Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, Dota, like the version that we used, one point was good, but if you want to do the same application, use 2.0 because it has like a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of more features. More images. Yeah, more images. images. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it will uh, have a higher, uh, like probably a better distribution distribution of class, uh, a higher like uh, diversity of images that your model will learn and like get better at. Identifying the objects. That's one general recommendation. And you, I, I think. I would like to add on this streamlit app. Like we searched a lot of things <laughs> to to make a user interface. But streamlit uh, overall is quite general if you want to make a web application. Yeah. It runs uh, like uh, pretty fast with Python. And you can also integrate it with Jupyter Notebook. We did not try that, but there was an option as yes. well. And there is uh, this map that you see here, and all these tools that you see. If you need to use it, there is a library called Leaf Map, which does this. And it is quite customizable. So it's just one map, but you can also split the map into two. And you can, um, so this is satellite view, so in one side you can show satellite and one side you can show speed, depending on the application. Yeah. Anything about a model or model? Yeah, yeah the, like, the U is very versatile, so it's very highly documented, so if you like want to ask something, somebody will probably know or have like asked already. So it's a quite good model for that. And like for inference